Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all to my simultaneous teardown review and comparison, pitting the long-time tank of a reel, the Saragossa SW, against the newcomer to the market, the Penn Slammer 3, which on paper is quite possibly the greatest $200 to $275 reel ever made. And what we're going to find out is how they stack up against one another. And before we go ahead and get started, I want to ask you guys for a quick and simple favor. Please hit that like button and let me know your thoughts and experiences down below. The reason why I ask is anytime I put out a video like this, the discussion that usually breaks out surrounding it oftentimes becomes just as valuable because it includes feedback from tons and tons of guys. I'm just one fisherman. What I experience may be different from what you guys do. So the more information, the more powerful the tool it will become as this video and the discussion around it becomes a point of reference. Lastly, if you don't mind, whenever you see eBay or Amazon affiliate links down below, anytime you do your Amazon or eBay shopping, anything you purchase, whether it relates to the links or not, all goes to the support of my channel. So if you don't mind, click those links, do your shopping via those links, and it's very helpful. And it's with all that being said, I thank each and every one of you for joining me. And if you wish to continue reading all these googly bits that you see in front of you, feel free to pause it. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, now that we've gone ahead and covered all the googly bits, I kind of want to start things off with what makes these reels sort of unique on the market, and that's how well they're sealed off against the elements. And as such, we're going to start from the top down, working our way from the outside in. I want to start off by comparing how they seal off the spool and the drag stack. Here we have the Saragossa, here we have the Slammer 3, and if you take a look at the drag knob, both of them incorporate a rubber lip seal. However, they function a little bit differently from one another. If you look at the Saragossa, the lip seal makes contact immediately upon that inside edge, whereas the Slammer 3 makes contact on the inside directly above the drag stack. Now, if I'm being honest, if I have to choose a winner, uh, I like the way the Saragossa does it. I like the fact that there is zero opportunity for any sand, water, or debris to get past that drag knob down into any area of anodized or coated aluminum, whereas with the Slammer's design, it's very reminiscent of what I experienced or what the Z-Bass reels of yesteryear used to incorporate, which was a seal down inside the spool, which on the early Gen 2s did allow for debris to get by the knob itself, and if the debris collected, it could actually cause binding as a fish was taking out drag. Basically, every time the spool would turn, it would bind against a drag knob, and cause it to lock down until you pulled the hook or broke off. It is worth noting that I did test to see if I can replicate it and I used coffee grinds and I was able to actually have the knob bind to the spool. It did not, however, happen when I was out on the water. Just something for you guys to be aware of. Just keep an eye out for that. Keep it in the back of your head. It shouldn't really come to fruition. It is a very good design. There is a decent amount of clearance between the spool and the backside of the drag knob, but just throwing it out there. And when it comes to the bottom half of the spool, these two reels are nearly identical. They have that drag plate at the base that has that rubber lip seal around the perimeter, like so. The only difference between these two reels, however, is in that the way Penn does it in the center, they incorporate another rubber seal that will seal against the main shaft Honestly, it's not really even needed because when it is fully compressed, the bottom of this, this spool itself is compressed against the spool shim like so. There's no way for water to get past that once you start tightening down the drag knob. But for those times when you do hose it down and the drag is very loose, uh, it's nice to know that you still have full sealing down in here. And with that comes one of my pet peeves of this reel. There aren't many. And that is the lowest resistance tested on a scale. When you take this drag and loosen the drag knob all the way, you can even take the drag knob off, comes in at eight tenths of an ounce. And as you pull it a little bit faster, it gets up to almost two pounds of drag at the lowest setting. So if you're the kind of guy that wants to use this for bait fishing and have a very, very light drag setting, the sealing at the base of the drag and at the top will kind of, I don't know, might be too much. <laughs> Would have been nice if it can go lighter. Now, moving along, 
Both of these reels incorporate seals at the main shaft and they are almost identical to one another on how they do it. And if you look here, the silver rotor retaining nut is from the Slammer. The brass one's from the Shimano Saragossa. They both have a rubber lip seal at the top and a rubber O-ring below. And there basically is, at this point, no way for water to get behind the ro rotor nut, into the rotor, down to the actual pinion gear. And there really isn't any way for water to get by this main shaft seal as long as the seals are you know, properly lubricated. Now, they're not necessarily high pressure seals, like you're not gonna be you know, bringing this thing down three to six feet underwater like you can kind of do an advanced doll or a Z-Bass, but they are effective at keeping water out and keeping it from percolating down the main shaft, getting inside the reel. And if you also look here, once again, nearly identical design, this little rotor nut retaining cap is what compresses that rubber seal against the rotor retaining nut. And that pretty much locks off everything from the spool down to the rotor. Now, it's below the rotor that things get a little bit different. And if you recall, when I compared the Slammer against the Saltist, I, I showed some concern about the fact that there was really nothing to keep water from getting underneath the rotor, past the rotor brake, and getting up against the sealed ball bearing, meaning the sealed ball bearing was the last line of defense. Now, full disclaimer, Pennant does apply a hydrophobic coating here which will cause the water to beat up and roll off. So when the rotor is spinning with the hydrophobic coating in place, the water would basically work its way out using centrifugal force and basically fly out. But on the way in, once, once the reel submerged, there really is nothing keeping water other than the ridging, the nested ridging underneath the rotor and on top of the rotor brake here to keep water from getting down. So it just makes it a little bit, little bit more difficult to, for water to get here. Unfortunately, water did, and it did get past the seal on that sealed ball bearing. Fast forward two days after the last outing with this reel, I started to notice that there was some corrosion or some pitting inside the races of the ball bearing and it got very noisy and very raspy. And it is indeed this ball bearing. Now, had that hydrophobic coating remained intact, would it have prevented this from happening? I, I honestly don't know. However, I would have preferred that the design not rely on one of the most sensitive ball bearings in the entire reel to be the last line of defense protecting one of the most sensitive areas in the entire reel, which is the anti-reverse clutch mechanism. So I, I guess you can kind of say I'm a little disappointed, but it's one of those things where I, I, I just don't know if it was a problem caused by me due to the fact that the hydrophobic coating kind of gunked up and I ended up removing it. So yeah, we'll move along from there. It's something to watch out for. And again, I'm on Penn's side on this one. I, I feel as though that what I did, even though Penn said that it shouldn't cause an issue removing or having that coating there or not shouldn't cause an issue, um, I'm gonna give Penn the benefit on the, of the doubt. But at the same time, when you compare it to how the Saragossa seals off their anti-reverse clutch mechanism below the rotor, it actually is a better design. There's, there's no way around it. If you look at the ceiling down in here, we don't have to take everything apart here. I could just show you very simply. This is a, this is a rotor cup. So if you look like so on the back side of the reel, this little metal cup goes into there. So that way the seal has something very uniform to ride on. And there is actually an additional O-ring. So that way when this is all compressed together, it's all kind of sealed and watertight. And when you look here, this has been thoroughly cleaned out of the box from the factory. It is greased to kingdom come. This entire seal on the top side is loaded with a ton of grease. And if you look inside this rubber seal here, you can see there's a big gap in there. Inside that gap, once again, is flooded with grease. On top of that, it is a very tight fitting seal here. So you have those two lips, the void that's packed with grease, all offering a ton of sealing. That is fairly high in resistance trying to turn this little seal against this rotor retaining cup. And again, when everything's in place, this gets sealed down like a hatch. 
and then you have an o-ring at the base that goes against here so it's sealed when it's everything's screwed down and bolted in that cap is sealed from the bottom with the o-ring and it's sealed at top here and the four screws all have o-ring seals at the top so no water can get by it's a brilliant design and it really is as waterproof as the twin power the stella at the anti-reverse clutch mechanism it is one of the best sealed reels on the planet you can even probably compare it to that of a z-bass or van stall in this area the side plate seals meaning where the handle traverses or the, ax the axle of the main gear traverses the ball bearings in the side plate aren't as stiff and as tight of a seal as you'll find in those reels but where you find the perimeter seal, where you find the anti-reverse clutch seal, I'll put that against a Z-Bass and a Van Stall all day, every day. I know tons of guys that dunk these reels regularly. The only issues they have are with the line roller bearings, which is to be expected with this kind of reel. Now, moving along real quick, since this is barely kind of a, a standard way of doing things here, you have your custom molded rubber you know, perimeter O-ring seal. And if you look, one of the most important features, the screws, where the screws go into the, the frame to lock them both side plates together are outside of the seal. That's, that's what I like to see. Thank you guys for that. <laughs> now it's worth mentioning that there is a lot these reels share with one another. Their designs are fairly similar and that can also be found in how they seal. What I mentioned earlier about the axle of the main gear where they traverse the side plate bearings. And if you see, you have that three screw design holding the bearing in place that compresses these gaskets here against the frame it's on the other side it's gonna go like that and then the washer goes like this and then you go like with the ball bearing like that and it sandwiches the washer into that side plate so that way water is not getting it once it forms around that axle of the main gear like so both of these are fairly tight fitting they're single lip seals. I think on the Van Stalls, you have a quad seal. Same thing with the Z-Bass, which are, again, much, much, much tighter, which is why when you're retrieving those reels, they're a lot stiffer because all of the seals, when you add up each individual seal, since they're so tight, that's why they're a little bit sluggish, which is kind of impressive how the Shimano and the Slammer, when these seals are properly lubricated, are very easy and free spinning reels. The Saragossa, I got to give them brownie points. They have such an effective way of sealing off that anti-reverse clutch mechanism. Yet, even though that sealing is so restrictive or constrictive and effective, on the output side of the gear train, it still is very easy to retrieve. Very, very well designed, very well, well thought out reel. I can't wait to see what they do with it in 2019. It's been around for a while it's due for a refresh i love the fa i really enjoy the saragossa sw i've had the 10,000s myself and i yes i am aware early on they had issues with unbalanced rotors and i believe they have since resolved that i haven't heard that being brought up and i haven't seen that uh evident in any any of the reels i've handled as of late this one doesn't have it it was mainly found in the 5000 and 6000s now, real quick, one last thing before we move along from the ceiling. I made some comparisons to your Vanstall and your Z-Bass reels, and I want to make it perfectly clear. If you fish these two reels like some people fish their Z-Bass and Vanstall reels, meaning they're swimming out to rocks, they're spending more time with the reel submerged, casting and retrieving with the, you know, the reel fully submerged, these reels will not last very long. They can take a dunk, they can take a splash, uh, and in my opinion next to those two reels and yeah the pentorque one i'm not even going to bring up the pentorque two because i don't know anything about it uh those reels can spend quite a bit of time underwater without the need for repeated maintenance or tear downs and the same thing can be said about the pen 706 or 704z if you pack the entire body with grease that reel can basically take as much of a beating as those two reels but you have to you know constantly flush out the grease every other trip or so and with that being said, let's go ahead now and move along to the internals. This is where we're going to be covering the gear train, the construction, the line lay, the, you know, the overall performance and intangibles of these two reels. And I, I think you'll find, once again, that these reels are fairly similar to one another, which is a good thing for a pen. I haven't really been able to say that when comparing a Shimano to a pen reel in quite some time. Now, starting off, we're going to take a look at the gear set. 
because they're staring us right in the face, we have the pretty large main gear of the Shimano Saragossa versus the pretty small main gear in the Penslammer 3. And keep in mind, roughly eight ounces separates these two reels. The Penslammer is a much smaller reel, hence the smaller main gear. But at the same time, Pen isn't one that's really known to put an oversized main gear in a spinning reel, which we saw on the $99 reel comparison where I took a 2500 size, eight ounce Daiwa Fuego, and it had a much larger gear uh, than the, the 4500 Battle 2. And the 4500 Battle 2 uses the same size gear as this. Actually, this might actually be smaller, believe it or not. But, but, it's not cast zinc, it's not forged aluminum, it's brass. And we here at Tackle Advisors, we like brass any way we can get it. And I, I got to give them credit. We haven't seen a brass main gear or a bronze main gear uh, in quite some time in a spinning reel. I can't remember the last time I found a brass spinning uh, brass main gear of this design, not like a Pen 706 or 704Z uh, in a spinning reel of this price range. This is probably the best main gear out of any spinning reel right now at its price range. So... How does everything else compare? You have your forged aluminum that's been coated. Uh, whether or not this is an alumite coating or an anodized coating, I don't know, but Shimano likes to coat their gears. And from what I have experienced now over the last couple, you know, last two decades, whenever I think the first coated main gear I fished was a Shimano first generation Thunnus. They didn't even call it plating gearing yet. And what I found and it, it, it rings true for pretty much every Shimano reel. When you get one brand new out of the box, they are buttery smooth or liquid smooth. Without a doubt, they're probably the smoothest spinning reel on the planet as far as a brand's concerned. However, once this finish wears, out goes the window smoothness. And what I found with other companies out of the box, including this specific reel, out of the box, they don't feel like a Shimano. And this specific model reel, in time, a couple outings, couple, maybe 10 or 20 hours of fishing, the whole reel starts to loosen up a little bit, the gears kind of run in, and they feel smoother, if that's what you want. So with that being said, take a look at the wear pattern on this main gear. I'm going to bring up Another close-up from a previous video that I put out where the reel hadn't been fished all that much. And you'll see a direct comparison in how well-worn that tooth is. If you look at the gear tooth, you can see that it doesn't extend the full length of the tooth. And you can see it almost has polished it, whereas before it just looked like it was a little marred. It actually ran in very well, and this reel became, like, when I say smooth, I would take it over a Saragossa, and that's kind of saying something. And then, the you know, a day or two later, you started here in the, let me get this off, maybe you can hear it a little bit better. Then you started hearing the raspiness. And it's not going to show up in the mics. I have my mic turned very, very low so you don't hear any background noise. So I, I got to give the main gear quality to pen on this one, even though I do like the main gear of the Saragossa. And, it's, and again, it's not a difference of much, in my opinion, even though it's superior metal. There's something about Shimano gears that do do very well. And for 90% of the guys out there, you're going to want that ultra smooth feeling reel and everything else that goes along with Shimano reels versus pen. And we'll get to that and what I mean by that in a minute. And I kind of want to take a look at how they go ahead and support the pinion gears. Uh, again, similar in respects, are just supported in different locations. If you go down in here, you can look down in there. And again, I showed this previously. I broke it out specific and separate. If you look down in there, you can see right there, there's some bare metal. That was a result of the pinion gear turning on that support. Now, if you look down in there, that bore, the frame's bore, is larger than that of the pinion's base. So in there, you can see it moving around and walking around. 
At no point in time, unless it's under a very serious, very heavy load, should the pinion ever make contact down there. And when you tighten down the rotor, the rotor retaining nut, when the reel's fully reassembled, that pinion is going to lift off. See how it lifts, lifted it off of there? So by no means should that ever make contact. This specific reel did make contact, apparently. And it has since kind of worn in. And there's no real indication on the water that there was ever anything going on there. So that might have just been an issue with the finish, maybe a little poor tolerance, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you look at how Shimano does it, Shimano goes ahead and supports the pinion at the base. They call it X-ship bearing. They've been doing that well before they called it X-ship. And you have a bearing here at the base of the anti reverse clutch. So how does that work? Well, you bolt the AR clutch down like that. And there's nowhere for the pinion to go. It is a rock solid, stable design. And when you compare it to the pen, again, the pen is a very solid design. It's just one of those things that since I've come to like Shimano and I've come to like Dio over the years, I feel as though they're very reliable. They bring a smile to my face when I'm fishing. They're smooth or they feel precise. That's not the most important thing, but it kind of adds to the enjoyment. So whenever I see this design here, I'm familiar with what it means when I'm on the water and I kind of like it a little bit more than how Penn does it here. Is it more effective? The, the pinion is being supported in two places. It's not like they're, they're supported at the same exact location. There is a bit of breadth between the two uh, support places so the whole lever action, you're not gonna put too much torque on the bearings. And as fishermen, 99% of the time, unless you fall on the reel and crush the rotor, you're not gonna be putting too much pressure on those bearings in order to cause any damage. So beyond that, when you compare the main shafts, gotta give the edge to pen, titanium. You don't see that very often. The only other uh, reels that offer that, I believe, are all found in the pure fishing arsenal. I think you can find titanium main shafts in the Pen Clash. You can find titanium main shafts, I believe, in some Fluger products. And then you have the Vanstols. <coughs> and moving along from there, We'll talk about the anti-reverse clutches. Uh, Shimano's been using something called Super Stopper for a very, very long time. And it is one of the most effective ways of preventing the rotor from going backwards. The only downfall that I can find with it is they are quite possibly the most sensitive to any kind of oil or grease contamination. So if you spray oil, WD-40, it could be anything, and it gets in there, it will fail in the cold. If you get grease on it, especially if they get to the top and the bottom of those individual cylinders that are in there. It will fail pretty much in any type of temperature. Now, I say hot versus cold because, you know, grease and oils tend to thicken a little bit when it gets colder, and that extra bit of resistance is all it takes to foul up that system. Other than that, it is, without a doubt, one of the strongest mechanisms on the market, and it's very similar up to the twin power. And when you compare it to what you find in the Slammer 3, it's an off-the-shelf part. It's very strong. It locks up very solidly. And it can, you can put a little bit of grease on it. You really can. In the cold, it'll fail if you grease it. In the warm weather, it won't fail. It will just basically add more protection to it. But at the same time, when it comes down to maximum loads, yeah, I don't know what it is about this thing here, but it just seems to always function. I never have an issue with them, and they're easy to fully maintain. I can just pop these two screws. Eh, screw it, literally. Pop these two screws real quick. You just got to kind of rotate that lid off a little bit. And you can take out each one of those individual cylinders, clean them top and bottom. You can put a light coating of oil and then wipe them down just so they have that, that surface layer of film. And then all you got to do is find the holes that don't go through and then put the screws back in like so. There we go. And there we go.
Now, what we're going to be covering next, if you're anything like me and you've been playing on Team Shimano and Team Dio for the last umpteen years, uh, may come as quite a big surprise. And that is how the Slammer 3 manages and lays line in comparison to the Saragossa SW. Now, side by side, they're nearly identical. It really doesn't get much better than this in terms of how your basic locomotion level wine system manages and lays line. Now, you can take a look at the little propulsion spool lip that's on the Saragossa, which actually does do a good job of preventing some of the slack loops from getting pulled off ahead of turn. But, but, the Slammer, perfect. Not a single issue. Not only did I not have an issue, I let somebody who has never once in their entire life fished in the salt they've never surf fished they've never been out boat fishing the salt let alone using eight and ten foot rods let alone fishing in conditions that are uh, less than ideal for a newbie and if you watch this clip here we were fishing in a in conditions that again if you're a newbie you probably would stay home and watch tv it was blowing between 20 and 40 miles an hour the wind was rotating around from the southeast heading northeast so the conditions were changing as the minutes went by so we had wind slamming us in the right ear and then kind of slamming us in the right eyebrow and i'll tell you what Hell yeah! Nary an issue. Hell yeah. The night before, southwest that fish winds, three feet out of the water. back, oh, red fins, oh, and oh. Yells right the kids, minnows, and metal lip swimmers. Again? again, hundreds of casts, slow, slow, never slow. an issue. And this guy never Woo. fished equipment, anything like this. He fishes braid, and I, I, I got to hand it to him. I was watching him fish. like a hawk. And never once did I see him throw a Hell blob yeah. of braid through the guides. That is not something you can say about many of their reels, including one of the most popular reels on the planet. The Nice two. and easy. And Good yeah, fish. It's one of those things that every time Penn comes out with a reel, the first thing I want to see before anything else is how it lays line. And I'll tell you what. From what I've seen... And when I've heard the Clash, this new Spin Fisher, and the new Slammer 3 do an excellent job of laying line and managing line. I can't find any faults with it. It is in every way, shape, and form on par to the Saragossa, or on par with the Saragossa. And in terms of casting performance, when you compare these two reels, there really isn't anybody out there that uses a locomotion, a simple locomotion oscillation system that I would consider a long distance caster. It's when you get to these super slow oscillation systems, when the spool takes, you know, six, 10, 20 cranks to go up and down. They have taller spools where the line, when it comes off, it doesn't have to change directions, which adds turbulence when it goes through your guides. If it's not doing that, it's not a long cast spool. And pretty much every reel on the market is going to cast within 10 feet of one another. It's that close. You're not going to really gain a benefit of switching from a Slammer 3 to a Saragossa to pick up distance in terms of, you know, maximum casting distance due to their line light. It's just not going to happen. So in addition to that, when you go and look how the main shaft is supported and how the oscillation systems run, everything about the pen, with one exception, is better than the Shimano. And that one stupid half a penny part makes such a difference. And it's, it's, it's got to be brought up and it, you, you got to kind of hit pen over the head for it. If you go online, you'll see, or if you spend as much time on the forums or message boards as I do, you'll see a lot of people complain about a knock on the top of the oscillation cycle on the bottom. So when the spool reaches its peak on the top and switches direction, and when it gets as far as it can go on the bottom and switches direction, you feel a knock. That's because in between the traverse guide and the post on the oscillation gear, there has to be a little bit of room, otherwise it'll bind. It has to have that little bit, that little gap. Unfortunately, you feel that knock. Now what Shimano, what Daiwa have, have added to this little post here is a rubber O-ring. That's all it is. So when it switches direction, that rubber O-ring 
kind of absorbs that impact, which is why you can add grease and it dampens it until that grease dissipates. And I'll tell you what, that knock can drive you nuts. If you're a guy that fishes a 706Z, a Crack, a Mitchell, a coffee grinder type reel, you got more going on than just an occasional knock, 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 knock at the top and bottom. So that won't apply to you. You won't even notice it. But if you're a guy that's used to fishing pen battles, if you're a guy that's fishing Shimano and Daiwa reels, you'll notice it and you'll think there's something wrong with your reel. By no means does it affect performance, but it's one of those things, enjoying your time on the water with a $200 or a $300 piece of fishing equipment, you kind of want to, you kind of expect some fluidity and precision, and you got to take a, knock the pen down a little bit for that. Um, now, in addition to that, when you compare the two oscillation systems, you, brass versus cast zinc, you, you can't compare, pen all the way. Is that important to have this made out of a, a, a super durable material? No, it really isn't. And at the base of it though, however, you do have, I believe that's a Teflon washer. On the underside of the Shimano, you can see right here, see what's polished in there? That's where it runs on the frame. Is that the end of the world? No, it's a $270 to 300 to even $400 reel. And you kind of want a little bit of extra, you know what I mean? And it runs on a brass bushing that's press fit onto the reel. You can remove it, it's not easy because it's very, very precisely fit. You'll most likely scratch it trying to get it off uh, if you're not prying from underneath it. And when it comes to the way the pen is supported, again, you have that, what appears to be Teflon, I don't think it's nylon, probably Teflon. That goes over that with this nylon or Delrin bushing in the center, and it's held in place by a screw all day every day we've got to go with the pen in addition to that you have a little bit of extra support so when this thing wants to twist you have that shaft that kind of locks it in place here and it can if it needs to run against the oscillation cam gear and in addition to that it has this little metal plate that kind of keeps everything from wanting to twist and torque out when it comes to the Saragossa if you look like this, again, you have this metal rod, like so. Might be going in backwards, I'm really paying attention to doing this fast. And it really relies only on one side. It, if you go ahead and kind of sandwich this here, you can see this side of the frame here has what is simulating this here. So in terms of support, they're about equal in that aspect. I'm really not going to knock them down, call it even, we'll call it a draw. Now, moving right along, I want to briefly touch on some of the materials used in the construction of these reels. And I'm going to start off at one of the most overlooked spots on any fishing reel. And I'm willing to bet that this won't make a difference to 99% of you guys out there. But I distinctly remember, it's got to be back now, 10 years, something like that. The original Saragossa FA, sized 18 and 20,000. 100 miles off the coast of New Jersey, out in the Hudson Canyons, I distinctly remember the sound of what sounded like a gunshot. And it was a break-off boat side on a big tuna. And it was a result of the original Saragossa's drag knob mushrooming due to the heat and pressure, binding to the spool, and locking up when that fish surged, and it blew off that 80-pound or 120-pound liter at boat side. And I distinctly remember a post on 360 Tuna later on that week. I might have even been Captain Mike on the Renegade. I, I, I'm going back 10 years. My memory might be a little foggy of who it was. But I remember the issue. I also remember Shimano addressing it. And I remember it coming up again with the updated or upgraded drag knobs. Now, fast forward to this year. And I'm not sure if it's ever been put out publicly. But... I received a picture from somebody who owns a 4,000 size Saltiga fishing down in Florida, and it's made out of what appears to be the same material of the Slammer 3, and the same exact thing happened. It heated up, it mushroomed, and again, keep in mind, the base here, this is what compresses your drag stack. All that heat and pressure is pressing down, all that friction is building up heat, and this can swell. I don't know if it's going to happen on the Slammer 3. 
However, it's worth mentioning that if you are fishing down in Florida and you hook a jack and a shark runs you off, you could run into an issue, especially when you're dealing with reels putting out as much pressure as these reels are capable of. And I, I, you know, I figured if I have experience with it, if I've witnessed it, if I've seen it, I want you guys to be aware of it, whether or not it's going to affect you. Up in the Northeast where I'm at, I'm willing to bet the only time you can ever run into an issue like that is with a tuna. But down south, you get some true speedsters that you can run into accidentally. So it's, it's worth bringing up. Now, moving along from the drag spool or drag knob, uh, the frames and side plates. Shimano's you know, signature is the graphite side plate with the metal uh, real stem side. And you know, I, I, I like metal, but I'm not gonna argue. It's, it's, it's worked. <laughs> I do like the fact that the screws thread into the metal side. The slammer, metal metal, and metal rotor and on the ghost, uh, I believe you have to go up to the largest sizes to get a metal rotor. And this is again, the 8,000 or 10,000. And there is just the slightest bit of inward flex and it's not gonna flex enough to cause any problems. Now, moving along from there, you have main shafts, stainless steel on the Shimano, titanium on the slammer. Gotta give it up for titanium. I mean, it's fancier, it's stronger, it does things differently. I don't know, it's, it's cool. It's more expensive material, I think. So I'm giving brownie points to the slammer on that one. And when it comes to the handles, this is gonna be on you guys. I'm not a big fan of these rubbery grips. I find that when your hands get, when it gets sticky, you know, it kind of grips too much. I like the shape of this better. I never liked the egg shaped handles on the Shimano reels, just, I don't like it. It kind of forces your arm to go in a specific angle. I like these because I can grip it here and reel from my shoulder and then go out wide and reel from my wrist or my elbow. These are a little bit more restricting. That's that's on you guys, that's just a preference. It's not bad. I, I like the Tranks knob. If you've ever handled the, uh, the larger 500 Tranks, I've put those knobs on a lot of my big uh, saltwater Shimano reels. I just, I like that style best. But this is made out of metal. Now, if you're fishing in the winter, metal gets cold. So if you're not wearing gloves if, or if you're fishing late nights in the spring, like it's been where it's dropped into the upper 30s and 40s, you got to watch because it will get cold. And in the sun, these if they're sitting up in the rocket launchers, you grab this, it's going to be pretty hot too. So that's entirely up to you. Again, personal preference, just pointing it out there. And it's also worth mentioning that you have ball bearings in the handle knob here versus bushings here. And I mentioned the issue I had with the water intrusion and the issue with the bearing at the top of the pinion getting damaged due to the salt water. These got very raspy. I cleaned them out, they're not that bad, but salt water did get in. Again, it's a dunkable reel. There really isn't much going on in here to keep water from reaching these two sealed ball bearings and water did get in. Will it cause an issue? Eh, it just makes them raspy so far. I don't really feel any grinding going on. I would probably prefer uh, bushings in this location here. Again, if you're using it in the surf, worth mentioning once again. And on top of that, we have the line rollers. You have ball bearing line rollers in the Saragossa. The old slammers used bushings. They did release a new bale uh, armature. And you can see if you look side by side, this is the old one, this is the new one. They do have a little bit of a change in the design. If you look at where the bale wire goes into here, it's all one piece, but this looks to be a little bit larger in this area. And the line roller itself has changed. It's no longer, no longer rounded, but it's a flat angled portion of the line roller and incorporates a ball bearing. So just pointing that out. So we're not gonna say one's better than the other. Sealed ball bearing here, non-sealed ball bearing here. Actually, you could probably say that the, the design on the, uh, the pen may be a little bit better. So that's kind of worth tossing out there as well. Now at this point, I think I've gone over pretty much everything. Uh, they both have rotor brakes. Uh, if you want to remove the bail trip mechanism, you can just take that screw out right there. You never have to worry about the bail prematurely tripping. You would be forced into using a manual bail. Uh, when it comes to the Saragossa, this is a manual bail. I think on the smaller sizes, it is uh, 
an automatic bail, but it does have a rotor brake. Sorry, this is a 10,000 slash 8,000. I can't remember offhand if the 6,000 and 5,000 are different. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that the Spheros does not use this one piece bail wire. And I bring up the Spheros because it really is 95% of what the Saracos is. Only it's black, has a different drag, missing a ball bearing, and has a different bail wire design. And one last thing before we go ahead and wrap things up, I want to take a second and compare how the Gosa and the Slammer do their drags. And if you look here on the left, you have the Saragosa's drag stack. And on the right, you have the Slammer. And starting from the top down, you can see that the Shimano uses smaller friction surfaces, but more of them on the top half of the drag. And on the bottom, the Saragosa, yeah, it's a bigger reel, uses a single large carbon fiber disc that runs off of the base drag plate and the base of the spool. Whereas with the pen, it's a little more involved. It's kind of the opposite, where the Shimano used more friction surfaces at the top and pen uses more at the bottom, but they're a little unique. If you look here, you can see that they are, not only are they more keyed and more rings, so there's more isolation between each one of the drag surfaces, they're actually adhered to the washers. Now, a lot of uh, lever drag reels use this uh, method of increasing drag pressure, where you literally glue the drag washer to the keyed ring, and that forces it to stay isolated, so each one of these functions independently, adding to the friction. So when you compare the two, if you see the specs where the Saragossa goes up to 44 pounds on their largest reel, where you can get over 60 with the slammer. That's kind of why. And lastly, and in my opinion, one of the coolest things about these dual drag designs, it really kind of does go to the, that buttery smoothness and low startup and non herky jerkiness is the fact that at no time is your drag running on spool shims that are made out of your standard Rulon, Delrin, Nylon, or Teflon. And if you look here, this is a Battle II, and you can find this design on hundreds and hundreds of reels out there over the last hundred years, where basically the base of the spool runs on that spool shim. So when you tighten down the drag, you have your nice fancy drag stack with your carbon fiber washers, blah, 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 and it gets compressed and it compresses that drag stack, but it ultimately ends up running on this here. So even if you have a buttery smooth carbon fiber drag stack greased with cowls or whatever, you know, drag grease, it still runs on this. This design keys the drag plate, the base drag plate, to the spool shaft. So the spool turns on this, and the spool turns on this. So again, at no time is this applying friction. No time is the spool spinning on that surface. Great design. Both drags are spectacular. Both of them are very smooth. Got to give max drag brownie points to the pen. Hands down, one of the best drags ever in this price range. I don't remember seeing anything even close, to be honest. But, but the lower drag capability of the Saragossa is advantageous to you guys out there. Live lining bunker, if you're chunking off the back of the boat, if you're free lining chunks in current off the back of a boat, if you're anchored up just throwing chunks out in current, you're just hand lining, you know, baits back and that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition to that, I mentioned earlier, the aluminum drag nog plunger. That is actually a nice feature as well. But in the end, if, you're, if you need 40 pounds of max drag, you never want to have to forcefully button down that drag. You, at least on the largest sizes of the pen, have an extra 30 pounds or 20 pounds of headroom. And you have that titanium spool shaft. Not saying that this thing can't fish 30 pounds of drag. I've never done it. I've only fished about 20 on the 10,000 sized Saragossas myself personally. And it handled it beautifully. But if you do need those maximum drag applications when you're trying to stop amberjacks and stuff like that, maybe some GTs on a budget, gotta go. Slammer. So with everything being said, in the end, when you compare every aspect of these two reels, whether it be price, whether it be how smooth they are, how rugged they are, their looks, everything you can possibly think of, how easy they are to break down and maintain, it's one of those things that uh, if you're, like I said earlier, on Team Shimano, you're going to go Saragossa hands down six out of seven days a week. 
If you're a pen guy, you automatically hate the Shimano reel, without a doubt. Pen guys are the most virulently defensive <laughs> brand loyal guys out there, despite pen not really being the pen of yesteryear, although they're making tons and tons of changes to the company post K2. And I, I gotta say, the Pen Slammer 3 is one of the best boat reels. If I'm on a boat, if I'm jigging tuna, if I'm targeting pelagics and I need tons of power and I need a rugged, reliable reel, I'm probably going Slammer hands down. However, if I'm on the beach, I, I still think that the ceiling of the Saragossa is just that much better than what you get out of the Slammer despite not having any sealing going on at the line roller bearing, which to me isn't a big deal because I grease it and generally the last a half a season before I got to reapply and I'm not going to have any issues with a raspy ball bearing where with the slammer, if you have a bushing version or the sealed ball bearing version, it will go a little bit further between the need for maintenance. And I always suggest you guys out there either grease or regularly oil your line roller ball bearings between these two reels. Some reels you don't want to, but these two I suggest you do. And, you know, line management. I've seen some pen slammers not lay line very well. 99.9% .9 of the Saragosas that I've seen out there lay line beautifully. Uh, I did, however, just the other day fish a 6000 that did have the wobbly rotor. It's the first time that I've seen one like that. And I even asked my buddy, I'm like, did you buy this the first week they came out? He's like, yeah, how'd you know? I'm like, because it feels like your tire's out of balance when I'm retrieving this thing. It was just wobbling so badly. Uh, but besides that, internally, they're very sound. Yeah, Penn's got the better, more durable brass main gear. But there's, you know, something to be said about the quality of alignment, the quality uh, of the gear cut, and how they mesh and all that kind of stuff out of the Shimano's. Yeah, you hear stories about guys burning out reels, and you hear guys, you know, burning out their pens. But I, I kind of like the, the fit, finish, and smoothness, and quality consistency of the Shimano product. So I, I think on the beach I'm going Shimano, which was pretty surprising. I kind of knew going in because I did a review back, I believe in 2013 uh, or 14 when this reel first came out. And I was very, very surprised at how well it was sealed. And being a, a Stella SW owner uh, since 2008, I, I can attest to how well that level of sealing uh, performs on the beach and this reel is actually better sealed than that because where they seal the AR clutch is just flat out better because it has a dual lip seal with that grease barrier whereas the Stella SW the 2008 version anyway only has that single lip seal and I you know it's one of those things you can kind of throw a dart, pick one, uh, whatever camp you lie in is what you're going to go with. Uh, I, I do think, however, the look of this slammer, I like it. I like it better than that of the Saragossa. I think the Saragossa is just kind of big, chunky, and blocky. And I like the knob. This style knob is more comfortable for me. I don't have the biggest of hands, but I do like how I can kind of grip it from here. I can grip it from the side here. Depends on how fast I want to retrieve. And... It's just one of those things where I guess that's personal preference. Uh, if you wear suntan lotion, you may have, uh, you may over time experience the sticky knob syndrome because the oils from the suntan lotion may affect this. This one's a little tacky, a little bit tacky. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was just grease on my hands or whatnot, but I've seen that way too many times. And it's one of those things that where if you're on a 40 hour offshore run and you're jigging and popping all that kind of stuff, you don't want to get blisters on your, 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 your retrieve hand. That's, that's the worst, especially when you're chunking flats of butterfish in the overnight and you got a blister on your hand, whatever. I don't want to get too uh, off tangent, but one last thing. Um, if you look here, somebody had mentioned or asked me if there's any handle play uh, in the comment section off of the Dio Assaultus versus Slammer review. And it's one of those things where handle play, no. But there is, if you watch here, just watch the rotor. See how it kind of goes back? Prior to shooting this outro, this end portion of the video, I took it apart and I took a close look. I cleaned out the AR clutch, oil-free, contaminant-free, and it's there. There is definitely some rotor back play. I never, you don't really notice it when you're fishing all that much. And if you're used to fishing a Pen Z, like anything else, uh, it's anything else in comparison is, is a Rolex, you know. But it's worth putting out there. I don't know why that is. It may be just the design of the clutch. But it's strange because when you just take the air clutch out of the reel itself and just 
kind of rotate it backwards just with the paw pinched between your fingers and you're just rotating the clutch unit itself, it feels fairly solid. So I don't know where it's coming from. I really don't. And I couldn't alleviate it. I couldn't fix it. And it's not a shimming issue because that sleeve is uniform throughout. It's not like a dia where they kind of have a, a cut in the top of it so that way anything mag oil gets down, it's going to kind of sit in that little that little, uh, that little recession in the air clutch sleeve. And I, you guys tell me, let me know down below uh, if you have that or experience that on yours. I was fairly surprised to see that myself. And I didn't notice it until after I replied to the gentleman uh, that and told him, no, mine doesn't have it or this one doesn't have it. But this one does indeed have, well, you don't notice it in the handle because for their, it's, if you see this, if it's a 5.9, we'll say if it's a 6 to 1 gear ratio, this back play is going to be six times more than what you see in the handle. And what you see in the handle, I mean, it's, it's rock solid. Do you see it moving at all? Nothing. There's probably more handle play. And there's none in the Shimano either. But it's just one of those things that, depending on how you answer the, or ask the question is how I answered it. And when I took a closer look at it afterwards and paid a little bit more attention to kind of every aspect is when I you know, found that, yeah, there is a little bit of handle play. I didn't notice it much when I was fishing, so that's you know, worth mentioning. And there is no rotor lean back and forth like this. So the rotor is you know properly, properly tightened down. That rotor retaining nut is properly tightened. It's not over tightened. It's not under tightened. It's, uh, it's perfectly tightened. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. But again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know down below your thoughts. Sorry for the uh, absence lately. It's been a, a, a tough uh, last 30 days between being sick, losing a friend, uh, and just trying to put as much time in the water to get all the information I needed for all these reviews because I don't want to be the guy telling you that a reel is great when I've never put any time on it, and I really wanted to see how this thing handled during the period of time where there are some bigger fish around and it performed great on the water. It just, if it was my fault for removing that hydrophobic coating, I'm not going to take any points off, but if in fact water would get up to that uh, sealed ball bearing at the top of the AR clutch, uh, even if the hydrophobic coating was there, I, you got to kind of uh, call out pen because that's, in my opinion, uh, in need of a redesign. Because, guys, you, you see Zeno burying reels in sand. I think he did it with this one. A lot of guys out there are comparing this to the pen torque, uh, the Vanstall VR, because it's what they hope and envision this reel as being, which is the ultimate budget surf reel. And if I had an issue with just dunking it twice, and the water really never went over the spool totally, it only went about this high. It was one of those things where you have water in a, on the bay shore when it's really getting churned up and it's like a washing machine. The water is way up over the sod bank due to the wind and the tide, and you kind of lay the rod over your shoulder. We weren't even waiting out on a flat. Usually we wait, we wait out, you know, 200, 300 yards up to, you know, waist or chest deep. This was just on the sod bank leaning the rod on the shoulder while unhooking a fish with little waves and water lapping up up against the reel, getting up under the spool and such. Didn't think there would be an issue with it. Never an issue with a Saragossa doing that. And it was a really wonderful reel to fish. After I had done the saltest, I relubed it, so it took a little while to wear in. And I'm like, wow, this has turned into a really nice reel. Didn't fish for a day. The next day when I was gearing up ready to go down again, it started getting raspy. I'm like, oh no. So I popped the rotor off, just wanted to make sure, pulled the belt ball bearing off of the top of the pinion support, put it on a bearing check tool, and sure as bleep, uh, it was that ball bearing. And it wasn't from, again, me over tightening because you can put a side load on the bearings in a pen reel if you over tighten it. Uh, I, however, did not, kind of like what an avid reel would uh, suffer from if you turn the lever drag up too high. Uh, you put a side load on a radial bearing and you can kind of crunch the bearings against the race and do damage. That's not the case here. It did get raspy. It's not the end of the world. And in addition to that, the ball bearings in the handle uh, have gotten a little raspy. The oil that I put on them kind of seeped in and quieted them down. But again, it's something that if it's a surf reel, surf fisherman, we are a, uh, a noisy lot. We expect a lot of our, our gear. We're very picky for the boat guys. 
only thing they have to worry about is just a quick hose down after the trip, and nine times out of ten, they're not dunking the reel. The only thing they'll suffer from is the accidental uh, spray down from a raw water wash down, and I think this reel is going to be... Uh, 100% protected against that, just as the Saragossa is. And as a matter of fact, I think the sealed line roller bearing may last longer than what you get out of the Saragossa SW. So in the end, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this was a, uh, a long time coming. I didn't want to rush this out there. I didn't want to get it wrong. I do like the Pen Slammer 3. I kind of would have a little bit more confidence in it if they did something at the top of the anti-reverse clutch, but that's just me from a surf caster's perspective. And when you compare it to what they did in the Saragossa, the Saragossa is much, much more uh, waterproof at that area than how they designed it in the Slammer 3. And until next time, guys, make sure if you made it this far, you hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you check out some of the other content that I've put out. I also have a very detailed comparison, probably the more detailed than I put out in this video when, uh, and when I compared it to the Saltist. And you can kind of put the two together and make a educated purchasing decision. And again, until next time, guys, tight lines, Thank you very much for all the time you guys spend here, and I will see you soon.